Good morning, I'd like to welcome everyone to today's Shia from Harav Yaakov at Snitzlita. Putting up a mezuzah, a practical guide. We are supposed to sponsor me a Shia called Egan Shia Terra 718-851-8651 or email IST at yeshivanet.com. Someone had an opportunity to put up a few mezuzahs and he had a number of questions that he asked and it was interesting that it was a, definitely a share for itself. First of all, can you use tape, double face tape, or Velcro? When exactly do you make a bracha, as we'll soon see, is a challenging question. The nusach, you're making more than, you're putting up more than more in mezuzah. Is there a mile to use a lucite case? And other questions like that, basically the do's and don'ts of the putting up of a mezuzah. Now obviously, I should mention before we start, there are some situations that there is no chi of mezuzah. No, obviously, then there's no reason to put up a mezuzah. I once saw a mezuzah that was put up and it was mamish, there was no shayla, there was no chiv. I asked him, why did you put it up? I, I wasn't sure. Okay, you know, hope you don't make a brach on that for sure. Also, I've seen more than one time that people put it in the wrong place. You have to make sure you put it in the right place going in. I once came to someone's front door and it was mezuzah on the left side. I asked him, why is it on the left side? So he looked, looked, and you know, yeah, you have a good question. There's one of the times I hate it to be right, you know, but you know, it's a bracha vatali put on the wrong side. So we're going to talk about today when a person is certain there is a chiyav and he knows where to put it. And I should mention if a person has a suffix, let him ask a shayla. And it's a toiva, if you have a shayla about any specific door, don't ask over the phone. It's very hard to describe properly. I've heard this more than once. A rav was asked to shayla, he answered, and, but he didn't know that there weren't. The Matthias was not explained right, and it's Mambo, she was wrong. So, we're going to talk about today after you know there's a Chiyav and Zavadei Chiyav, you know where to put it. The question is basically, as we said, the do's and don'ts of actually putting up a mezuzah. So, the first you saw we should know is when a person puts up more than one mezuzah, even though each mezuzah is a separate mitzvah of Neyatzma. But the Machab and Yeridei, at the beginning of Reish Peites, quoting a Rajba, says, actually it's a Ramon, beginning of Reish Peites, when you put up two or more mezuzahs, one bracha covers all the mezuzahs. Even though it's a separate mitzvah, but then again, like you tell you, you make one bracha. Here too you make one bracha. But the question is, okay, fine, you make a bracha on one of the many doors. Which door? Should you make the bracha? Which path is the other ones? So the truth is, as we should know, there are different level chiyuvim regarding mezuzah. The marshal, a door with a, a, a doorpost without a door, going into a living room, typically there's no door, is machloik, if it's chayiv. <clears throat> that has less of a chayiv than a regular door with a doorpost. A rented house, as opposed to a house one owns, is also less of a chayiv. Rent was chayyeh, but according to many, only midrash banan. A, a room less than dollar or dollar is either potter or, or less of a chayyeh. <coughs> but logic dictates when you have a few doors to put up a mezuzah on, which should you make the bracha on? The one that has the most chayyeh. And let me give you a simple, practical, common halacha lemaisa. Let's say a person bought a house and he's putting up many mezuzahs. He's moving, he bought a bungalow, a summer home, you know, now it was the summer months, uh, there's many different things. He took off the mezuzah to check, and he couldn't put it back until the next day. So you have to make a new bracha. So he has a bunch of mezuzahs. Which should he make the bracha on? So a person's first reaction is, what do you mean? You put it on the front door. Well, the truth is, there's no difference to chiv on the front door or any door. But the truth is, the front door often is not the right decision. I'll explain. Because in many homes, the front door leads into a small vestibule. Small room that basically it's good to keep the cold out for during the winter, to keep the, the air conditioning in the summer. So you walk into the front door, small room, then you open another door and then you go into the house. Now this vestibule sometimes has place uh, to hang up coats and a hat. But you walk in from the front, from the outside, into a small vestibule. That vestibule typically is less than dollar al dollar. So you're walking into a room that could be not even chayiv and mezuzah. So even though the front room sounds like the, the, the beginning of the house, sounds like a great idea, but if it goes right into a small room less than dalit on dalit, then that's not the right choice. 
So it's better to put it in, in the next door post that goes into the house, if it has a door. But again, the person has to make a, a proper assessment where, what door should be chosen. Now, the, uh, the issue might be, interesting enough, if you walk in the front of the house, so you want to put it on the first opportunity, I'll say, my view in Allah Mitzvah. Don't forget, it could be Allah in Simon Chafei, quotes Rashi and Yuma, the Flamet Gimel, that Eim Avin Ala Mitzvah is a Chi of the Raisa. So maybe the front of the house should be the right choice because that's the first you encounter when you come into the house. True. But then again, if it has less of a Chi of, then make a bracha on a different door. You know what it's like? It's like someone that's very Makbid only makes Kiddush Tavani after seven days. And the Dhamma's Maravan is sure that they're making it after the third day. So he doesn't want to make it with them. But he has to walk by them and, and just wait till seven days. So, you know, he, he feels like, I should do it now. But that's not so convincing because if for him this is not hit the mitzvah until Zion, so you wait for the, the better the mitzvah. So basically you have to make a decision, choose the right room, the one that has the most chiv, and even if it means being mavirin on this room, but you go to the most chiv and make the brach on that. Now, the next question is a lot more tricky than it seems. And that is exactly when is the bracha made? So you're wondering, what's the shayla? We know the klal is, oival asiyasa. Okay, but let me ask you, so what does that mean? So first of all, there's a, a mukiyosif, at least the pastor of the mukiyosif in his halach, on halach, his ketanis and halach, mezuzah, seems to say that you're, first, you're supposed to first put up the case and then put the mezuzah in. Because if you put the, the mezuzah into the case and then attach the case, he calls it a, an interesting chiddush of tasa v'loy You already put it into the case. So then you're putting up the case, not the mezuzah. Now that's very big chiddush, because in a, the mezuzah in the case is not yet the mitzvah. Rabbi Chaim Kayevsky in the safe mezuzah beisecha, that's a pirish on the, on, on the Shulchan Aruch Yeridea, in Sivkot and Beis writes the Ferish, Putting it into the case is not a question of Tassel and Asli. It wasn't, the mitzvah wasn't done yet. So Avada the Minigisral is that we first put the mezuzah into the case, and then we attach the case to the wall. But the question is, exactly when should you make the bracha? And let me tell you, again, this is important to mention Pasha, on a practical level. The Allah is, we make a bracha, oival asiyosam. But too soon is also no good. That's what's called an Allah, oiva da oiva. Imagine a person, he makes the bracha on tefillin, and then he takes it out of the zekel and wraps it, unwraps it and puts it on his hand and then makes the kesha. That's oiva la siyosan. But the problem is, it's too oiva la siyosan. You don't make a bracha before, any time before. You, make, you first take the, the tefillin out of the case. You unwrap it, put it on your hand, put it in the right position, Right before the actual kshira, you make the bracha, that's oiva la siyasam. But making it too soon is oiva da oiva. In fact, some even, that's the minute Shulchan Aruch quotes it, you cut a little bit of the chala, then make a moitz, then you cut the rest of it. Even a necessary hefsik should be avoided. In other words, it's not a hefsik bidi eved, if you have to put on the, put on the tefillin, but do it right. Take it out of the case, put it on the, the Box, put it on your hand, make the brach, and make the final kshira. The question is, so how does that apply by putting up a mezuzah? So let me tell you what's poshit. The mezuzah has to be put in the right place. The Shulchan Aruch, in the beginning of Reish Pei Tes, says you don't put it any place on the doorpost. You're supposed to put it tchilash lisha elyon, which basically means you take out a tape measure, you measure the height of the door, divide it into three, the upper third quarter, the third part of the, of the doorpost, is the place for the mezuzah. Tchila shlish elya, the upper third part of the doorpost. I want to tell you, looks are very deceiving. If you measure it, you'll see it's a little lower than you would think. Too low is ma'akib, even with the evan. I have a friend of mine, Zayn Gizum, we got married at the same time, he didn't have children for a number of years. And he spoke to a, an Adam God who said, check your mezuzahs. He goes, I did already. He goes, no, check where they were placed. And they were all placed too low. On the Shlishelian is possible. So you take out a tape measure, you measure, and that's the place you should be put. Additionally, the same Chabah says, 
It also should be tefach asamach lechutz, which means basically, imagine every doorpost, sometimes some of them are wider than the others. Let's imagine this piece of paper is the doorpost. So you could put it over here, when you walk in right away, in the middle, or at the end of the doorpost. Where do you put it? The beginning of the doorpost, middle, or the end? So the Shulchan Aruch, which is very mistavra, says, put it, tefach asamach lechutz. Put it at the first possible place. Why? So the Shach and Taz both explain it. It's a very logical Yisoyed. A mezuzah is a shmira. Don't you want to maximize the shmira you have? If you put it at the end of the doorpost, so the whole beginning is vulnerable without a shmira. If you put it at the beginning of the doorpost, so the shmira begins immediately and continues into the house. So there are two places you have to determine before you put it up. And also, now here's a problem that could happen. A person makes a bracha and then he realizes he didn't yet make it, to, didn't yet measure it. So he starts going, oh, no, no, oh. And the family says, like, what do you want? So finally, he's very frustrated. He goes, tape measure. Now, how are they supposed to know that oh, no, no, oh means tape measure? So it's, it's a, it's a half sick that could have been avoided. So before you make the bracha, you measure the doorpost. Make a, a note where the shlishelion is, decide where you're going to put it. But more than that, and this is a little of a chiddish, but it's, I, I think it's poshit, the experience shows us that when you try to knock, an, well, especially a small nail, into a doorpost, the first time sometimes you hit your finger. Second time the nail flies away. So it ends up being frustrating and, the, and it's a delay. So it's much more practical to before you make the bracha, you measure it you just, and, and take the nail, put it through the hole, knock in a little bit of the upper nail till it goes in, not all the way in, but until it goes in partially. So that's like the tefillin on your hand before the culmination of the final kvias. The mile with that is that once it's in, it typically goes in more. But if you make a bracha and then start knocking the nail, it takes time, you lose the nail, and it's a delay. So you can knock both sides, top and bottom, a little bit. En- a little bit enough that it's starting, but it's not enough that it's a kvias. And then after the bracha, you could complete the kvias. And I thought maybe this is the pshat and what's otherwise a plea. The Shulchan Aruch and Reish Pei Tes Aleph says, if you want to come to put up the mezuzah, he says, Yik- listen to the Lashem. Yani chene b'shveferes, so the Mechaba says, put it up and make the bracha. I thought, the Rambam is Mefurish. Make the bracha and put it up. But what's shot in the Mechaba? I thought maybe the Mechaba means like we said. Put it up a little bit, top and bottom, a little bit, and then make the bracha and then finalize it. And I found Ravazla in Chelik Beis, Kuf Nunches says this very pshat in the Mechaba. So basically, if you make the bracha too soon, it's oiva to oiva. Too late, you're missing oiva lasiyasa. So do it when it's about to be completed. Which hand should a person use to knock the, the, the nail into the wall? So there's an old child, it's machleik, it's poiskim actually, mechab ramo and tof reish nanalif, sif gimel, where the mechab says you always use the right hand, even the left to use the right hand. For mitzvahs, you use the right hand. The ramo says, he uses his right hand, his powerful hand, which is the left hand. So typically, regarding holding a kois, holding the alminim, chsidim and svaradim follow the mechaba, always the right, and b'nei ashkenaz follow the ramah, you hold, a lefty hold in his left hand. But it's logical regarding knocking in a nail that you need koyach, and you do a better job with your stronger hand, so probably a lefty should use the left hand, and the emphasis is the right hand, anyhow, has to hold the mezuz in place. So he's basically using both hands. The nusach is always likvoya, not likvoya. Some people, you know, say likvoya, but it's not ma'aki, but the right nusach, like in the, in the more accurate sedurim, is likvoya mezuz. An extremely beautiful shayla, it seems simple and also very challenging, is let's say I'm putting up two or more mezuzes, what is the proper nusach? So you we just said, like, boy, mezuzah, right? But here's the question. In Yeradeh Kuf Chaf Siv Gimel, the Shulchan Aruch says, if you toivel two or more kalim together, you, make, you don't make the brach al tefillah's keli, you make the brach al tefillah's kalim. 
So the bracha indicates how many mitzvahs you're doing. So maybe logic dictates that just like Tfilas Kelly is upgraded to Tfilas Kalim, so too Likboya Mezuzah should be changed to Likboya Mezuzah. But the Chiddush here is that the Shulchan Aruch regarding Kalim changed the Nusach. But here it just says, if you have two or more, you make one bracha. It doesn't say that you also change the Nusach. And that seems to be Allah Chalamaisa. Even if you're putting up two or more, the bracha remains the Kboya Mezuzah. But the question is, Manishtana, why is Mezuzah different than Tfilas Kaili? So here you see again the Shankar of our Torah. Zogdim Ar Shagan Yeridea Aleph Mem Tes. If you're going to make the Nusach the Kboya Mezuzah, it might sound like you're supposed to put up two Mezuzahs. Maybe one on each door to make both happy, or maybe two on one. And that's Bal Toysef. So the Nusach doesn't sound right, it just sounds like there's a mitzvah, that not, there's not a mitzvah. So he said that's misleading. And Lebushay Mordechai and Chelek Dal, the Reish Nadal said the same Yisoy. Then there's another Pshat, Rav Oz and Chelek Vav, Sim and Kuf Samach. This is a beautiful Pshat. The word Mezuzah al Pitoira has one meaning. Mezuzah means a doorpost. Mezuzah is Beisech, it means a doorpost. We call the, the scroll, the cloth, Mezuzah, that's a Shem Mushal. The real word is mezuzah means doorpost. Mezuzah is, is two. Zokra Vosna, we try to keep the bracha patterned on the, the, the lashon of the pasik. But here, we can't use the word likboya mezuzah like the Torah uses, because mezuzah would sound like mezuzah means doorpost. So we use the new word mezuzah. Mezuzah, oh, that I know what it means. That means the scroll. So, in other words, to distance ourselves from it going on mezuzah's beisecha, we'd have to say the word mezuzah, even if putting up two or more mezuzahs. And then he has another pshat, a beautiful pshat. And listen to how, how many, how many brachas will explain with this pshat. And he says that really, the word likboya mezuzah is, is a misnomer. You can't put up two mezuzahs in one time. Unless you're a, 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 you know, a Balmoifis, one at a time. But you could table two or more kalim at one time. If you get a net that has a lot of holes, you could table silverware two at one time. So, Tfilas kalim is correct. I'm doing it all now. But you can never look for your mezuzahs right now. You'll do one, and then the second one. So therefore, he says, it's misleading the boy your mezuzahs. And that's what he says. Then I saw... The Shraga Mechei Lekei Pe'alef adds a beautiful point. He says, do you ever wonder that, we, that come out nobody, probably nobody, lights only one there Shabbos? Whether you light two, Zach of Shama, or corresponding to the children. So why not make a bracha l'hadik ne'er shul Shabbos? No one, except for the first night, for, uh, you know, we, don't, we light only one there on Hanukkah. We light every night at Ma'is of Ha'ilach. So why is the bracha l'hadik ne'er shul Hanukkah not ne'er why is a shaykh make the bracha shechita, not shechitois, if he's making many shechitois? So Shraga Meir says it's the same yesoid. And he says that because you can't light two nairs in one time, and you can't shech two animals at one time. So therefore, it's one at a time. So tefillah's kalim is the exception, because you can make two in one time. And then he adds for good measure, there's one exception, we do make a Lashen Rabbah, and that's when you make two Eruvin in one time. Lemashul, if a person makes an Eruv Chatzerois, and an Eruv Tavshilin, Eruv Yamtiv, what's the Nusach? Not on Mitzvah's Eruv, on Mitzvah's Eruvin. Ah, because there you make them both together. You may, you, you, the Kviyas is the Bracham, and the, the subsequent Nusach. So that's Shaykh, a Lashen Rabbim. So in a simple, quote, a simple uh, Nusach, there's so much to it. So Lamaisa, whether you put up two, one, two or more, the brach is always likboya mezuzah. The next question is, let's say a chasin kala, that for the first time in their lives they're putting up a mezuzah. Do they make a shechianu? The first time? So the truth is the kala has the same shayla, the first halak is neiris. So this is a bachloikis, Rama and shach, in Yeridea, Simon Chavches. The first time a person is zoichet to shech, does he make a shechianu? So to make a long story short, the Shach Paskins, that Shechianu is only on a seasonal occurrence. Once a year, or even twice a year, two crops. But first in the lifetime is a great Semchan, thank Hashem, that's good. But that's not Zman Hazer. 
and the Bialach and Simon Chabay said that's the Bechari the Minig, but he does say when a person is doing a mitzvah for the first time, it's worthwhile to try to create a Shechiyanu, either a new Keli, a new, be, a new Beged, a new Peri, and the Shechiyanu goes on the, on the Beged and also on the mitzvah. So, Lamaisa, this is done, a Kala would make the Shechiyanu not only on the mitzvah, but on the on, on the kela, on the lalaychda, and the you know, a makes on all the, the, the things that he bought. But the question is, when they're putting up a mezuzah for the first time, try to squeeze a shechiyanu in. Not so much on the mitzvah kriyas mezuzah, but on the, the fact is that you have a, a bayis chadash. So maybe the shechiyanu that you're going to see on the bayis anyhow, say it by the kriyas mezuzah, and especially, especially some pais gemed, that maybe it's not right to live in a house without a mezuzah, so now you're allowed to live in the house, so you make a shechianu on both. And that's a good eitzah. The only problem is, if your minig is to make a teva meitav on a house, so then a teva meitav doesn't cover for the mezuzah. So that's why it's a little of an issue, but if those make a shechianu on the house, and there's a chesh, why not to make a teva meitav, whatever, not for now, but if you make a shechianu on the house, so the eitzah would be make a by the kviyas and mezuzah, and it goes on the mitzvah and the house as well. Now, if you do this minig, it's fine, but you have to realize that it's not a good idea to make the shechiyanu after the kvaya mezuzah, before you put up the mezuzah. Because if you sort of stuck in the, the shechiyanu, but really going on something else, it's going on the house, or a beged chadash, so you made a bracha on kvias mezuzah, you made a shechiyanu on your new, new suit, and then you put up the mezuzah, so then the Shechiyan was sort of a half sick between the, the Berchas mitzvah and the Kriyas Mezuzah. So either you make the Shechiyan before the Berchas Kriyas Mezuzah or after you put up the Mezuzah, but it's not a good idea to do it a typical order. Rather, some say, on every time you have a, 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 a Peri Chodesh, make the Shechiyan either first or after you eat a little bit. So that's part of a different share, but it's probably the best idea to make a Shechiyan either before the Kriyas Mezuzah or before the bracha kviyas mezuzah, or after the kviyas and mezuzah mamish, and then you have the shechiyano to be yitzel the chola days. If you can't, so minig is not to make on the first kviyas mezuzah. If someone is just replacing the mezuzah after he took him off to check, and it was an night in between, so there's no shechiyano, and that's poshut. When a person does make a bracha on one or more mezuzahs, have a mind to pat to all of them, and also not to be mafsig until he completes the. All the mezuzahs, it's like making a bracha on Badikas Cham, it's on all the rooms of the house, and not to talk until you finish the entire, all the entire house with all its parts of the mitzvah. Now, some pais can recommend after you make the bracha, like Boya Mezuzah, to make a stickle of, of a dira, like sit down in the room, do something, not just walk to the next room. Even though Lamaisa, you could say that the fact that the mezuzah is functioning to protect what's in the room, that's a sort of like a base oitza. But it's zikha better to make a little of a kvius, so the brach is chal on your dira in that room for a moment, and then you move on to the next room. A big question is, is it dafka necessary to have nails? Or any kvius would be sufficient? The person has a metal doorpost, or he's not so good with nails, he wants to use double-sided tape. Velcro, today is another option. So the Muki Yosef in Daf Nun Tes, in Bav Metziah Daf Yarif, and I quote, Yechab es akona binisorim, that's masmerim, that's nails, oi besid, which of course, sid today would be glue. And the Shechonarch and Reish Pei Tez Dalit says, Kate said, Koiva, Yemasmerena bimasmerim, put it in with nails. He leaves out sid, but the Chayra sid, like the way the Shochan explains, uh, glue is as good as nails, because it also has that permanence. Now, the question is, why does the Mukha Yosef, the Mechaba, seem to insist on nails? What would be wrong with if you have scotch tape? So the Menachis, the Aflamid Beis, the Gemara says, Tola b'makel psula. If a person hung the mezuzah from a, from either, either, tupshot, either he put it on a, on a stick that's protruding from the wall, or he's hanging it from a string that's, that's attached to a, a makel. So basically it's on the doorpost, but it's not really connected to the doorpost. Zotig mar, it's psula. My time, why is it possible? Tala b'makel, b'sha'arecha b'inan. Now, the way the, the, the Rambam explains, Perkei Alocha Ches, she'ein ze kavua. 
Tala b'makol, either pshat, is lacking in a kvias. And presumably, if the nusach ha-brocha is likboya mezuzah, so that's part of the tzuras ha-mitzvah to make a kvias. And Tala b'makol is not a kvias, so you're not doing the mitzvah. And the Torah in the beginning of our simon quotes this also. Rather, Mechaber doesn't say, Bechlal da'Allah ha-tala b'makol, which is a, a different sugya. But says the Archa Shulchan emphatically in Simon Tez, Sif Tezvav, that Talib Amakal is possible, and Mavuya Midvireyam, that the Likuva you need to be attached to the doorpost. And therefore, Masmerim or glue is good, Mali, Masmer, Mali Devek, but you need a Chiba Gomor. But without a Dibuk, without a real connection, it's not Mezuzah's Beisecha, and therefore you're not Yoytzer. So the Rosh is very insistent that you need a real connection. Nails or glue, or in his time that was, that was the, the, the Sid. And there's a long list of Hayin Tikapoiskim that insists that it should be nails or, or glue. It's actually earlier Poiskim, the Malkiel, the Das Kedoshim says this, the Marsham. In fact, the Kitzvah Shachonorach says you should have two nails, not just one. Make it a real Kvias. However, there is a different way of understanding this whole sugya. And that basically is that the, the kviyas is a hechatimtza that it shouldn't fall down and the mezuz will come to bezayin. Zok the Bach, and he based it on a Yishalmi, that labd after mesmerim. That's just a guaranteed way that the mezuz will stay up and it won't come with a bezayin. But as long as you have a secure way of attaching it, Zok the Bach, it's also good. And the Shach L'choyer seems to accept this Bach L'maisa. I Tala B'makel. There's Tala B'makel, it's hanging. It's not really connected. It's there, but it's not connected. But if you have a way of connecting it that's not necessarily Masmerim or Devek, what's wrong? So it's really a fundamental Machloik is Kudoyli Achroinim. What the title of the word Likboyim Mezuzit? Is it a, the conventional nails or glue? Or is it any Kviyas that lasts? Now, it seems that all the Pais can agree, putting on scotch tape that doesn't last is not, a, is, first of all, it's not safe, it might fall down, and number two, it's not really a kvias. We're talking about a secure connection, let's say Velcro, or a, a strong double a face tape. The, according to those that hold, you have to have either Devek or Masmeyum, that that would not be acceptable. Velcro is not a, 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 a kvias. I mean, it's attached and it's not going to fall off, but there's no actual kvias. In fact, the yes of Chaim Kanyevsky is a magnet good. He said, no, a magnet's not a kvias. Now, it's very secure. It doesn't fall off. And that would be the shita of the Mukayosev with the Archa Shulchan. Those that are mekel would say as long as the, the, the connection is secure enough, that is lav dafka masmeir. Now, Lamaisa, the shach does say if you're having a, a temporary kvias, let's say a person is going to be staying just for a short while, he's staying just for a month and a half in a bungalow or a marshal, so he doesn't want to you know, be, go through the tirch of knocking your nails. So if it's a short kvias, then all agree that would be, then, the, then the, that type of kvias would be enough. But one thing I will say, there, I can't say, of course, that without nails, it's not yoitza, because the Bach and the shach were, were big poiskim. But again, then again, you have the Archa Shulchan and based really on the Pashtas of Mukha Yosef. You know, there's a cloud that we like to go with the, the tour, the Beis Yosef and Archaim Simon Tofrei Sadik quotes the Ran. A Ran is regarding a question of uh, Kriya Samagila, actually. But the cloud is negated to all of our endeavors. He says, when a person in business doesn't take chances, you make an investment, you like to do it, something that's certain, you don't take risks. Certainly, with Torah and Mitzvah, that these are these are the Kshoyne Shaloylam. This is our this is Mamish, our real parts of our lives. Do things without Sveikas. So again, I can't say it's wrong to use a Velcro, but Reb Chaim says Magad is no good. Probably Velcro also would be questionable. Even though I saw a quote by Shem Rabbi Yashiv that if you can't put in a, a nail, Velcro also good. Maybe he was Seimach on the Bach. But basically, I, I would say one thing. Even in a Metal door, there's a simple up, and that is basically get a drill. Or if you can't do it, get someone does do it, and you make a hole, and you make a hole once, and it lasts forever, and then you screw it in, and it stays. Now, someone asked me if he thought it was a lumbar shashayla. I would love to make a, put it in with a drill and then put it onto my, onto my metal door. 
but the, the mitzvah is like boya, I have to make a ma'isa kvios, and all I do, I press the, the button, and the drill goes by itself, so it's only a grama, it's not a ma'isa kvios. So, it was a good, uh, I don't want to say it's a good joke, but it is, because that, that's the truth, is that that's koyach rishon. Imagine Asaph shoots 25 people with his automatic machine gun, he goes, not me, it's the machine gun. <laughs> if you create a koyach rishon, that's your ma'isa. So, meet a toy maruba, if you press the button, and you hold on to it specially, and you, as, as it's drilling, so that's your koyach. And Grado, to me, I found, what's well, a big chiddish, but, but uh, the same svar, in Alicha Shleima, Shem Zalman, and this is a chelik aleph, and Perik Dal, it's Simen Chavob, Siv Chavob, he has a shayla about a, a, a bottom macha that uses a electric appliance to make the bottom, you know, square, the ribua, which is really a, a part of the Allah Ba'ish Sinai. So he says, since you have to hold on to the, the keli at all times, that's considered a constant koyach rishon, and it's considered his ma'isa even regarding the ribuah. Now, someone told me he heard that before you put up the, the mezuzah with the brach, you have to wash your hands. Now, maybe if you came straight out of the basic kisa, you just went to the mikvah, maybe. But what should be the reason they have to wash your hands if you put up a mezuzah? So I don't know, you know where he heard it from, but I think I know where he's coming from. The klal is, you're not supposed to touch kisvei ha-koydesh. And it's an agiyah. See how careful we are by touching you say to Torah. But to give ego very clearly in simen nun ches in the tshuvas, the peschei tshuva in reish peye, as they are chashulchan, both quote the give ego in halacha, that kisvei koydesh is lab daf kisei to Torah. Even mezuzah one should not touch with his bare hands. I mean, when you have to, you have to. But says there are more in kuf memzai and aleph and archayim, that if you have to touch the mezuzah, you have to, you have to, so if has to uh, wrap it up, uh, minimally, right? Okay, writing, maybe it's not your mezuzah, but you have to touch the mezuzah. So, I was covered for the touching, the kisvei koideh, you're supposed to wash your hands first. So, I imagine, when they used to put up mezuzahs, they took the mezuzah, they wrapped it up, and then they put it in a case. So, they inevitably touched the mezuzah. So, therefore, it's logical to assume that if you touch the mezuzah, you have to wash your hands first. But today we get basically a finished product. The cipher wraps it up and puts it in, in one wrapping and two wrappings. So you put up a fully enclosed mezuzah in a case. At least to my knowledge, there's no reason you have to wash your hands. Unless maybe your hands are dirty and you want to make a bracha of minikiyas, fine. But probably the real chiyav would have been when they touched the mezuzah in the olden days. Now, the, someone asked, can he put up mezuzah at night? And the answer is, why not? Why not? Night has the same chiv like day, otu, layl, lay boy, chai, like the Amora says. And Bemis, the Chaim in the Mezuz Beisecha, Reish Peitez Gimel quotes in Eshkol, the Shevet Akasi in Aleph, Reish Ayin Zayin says, Chachela, believe, pick book, you could put a mezuzah at night. Now, the truth is, I would add, there is a little bit of a pick book, at least I'll pick up all of The Benish Chai in Kisav, Eishan Abayz, Oiz Dalit, writes that even though there's an Indian not to put a mezuzah at night, like like tzedakah because of the shlit of mazikim, but don't delay putting up mezuzah. If it's at night, put it up at night. Now, pizoya, there's certain inyanim that at night is the shlit of mazikim, and if possible, avoid putting up a mezuzah at night. But, the stay chemed, in Mareches Mem, Kuf Tezvav, quotes again as Verodim, that basically a mitzvah that is man is yoyim alayla, you could put it up at night, lechatchila. So the truth is, I think, it's correct to say, l'chatchila, you put it up as soon as possible. Because delaying a mitzvah is wrong. It's a Shia Muslim and and also not to stay in the house out of mezuzah. If you can put it up by day, put it up by day, Avada. If it's only at night or wait till tomorrow, then do it at night and do l'halacha because there's no pikpuk. There's in yonah. So, but not to delay the mitzvah for that reason. So basically, whenever the mezuzah is ready, put it up. If you first get it at night to wait till tomorrow, seems to be improper. Because even the, the Ben Ishchai, who was aware of it, said, but don't, don't delay the mitzvah. Question, how could someone who can't put up mezuzah, let's say a person is not good with nails, could he get someone else to put up a mezuzah for him? So this we find, that the general klal is mitzvah ba yoysim me As I told you earlier, this is a klal for all mitzvahs. And this is a klal that some say is a deraisa, based on a pasuk. So basically, if a person could do it himself, let him try and let him learn, and Avadi should do it himself. The question is that in this particular case, maybe Kfiyas Mezuzah is different. Because maybe the mitzvah is that the mezuzah should be on the doorpost. So, who cares? Someone else does it. The mitzvah is it's on the doorpost. It's a Echatimtza. 
So I would say shtei tshuvas the double. First of all, the makar of mitzvah boy yoyis mishluch kedusha mem aleph is from achana for Shabbos. The Heilig Amaroyim themselves did the most menial tasks to prepare for Shabbos. Now, achana for Shabbos is only hechsha mitzvah. The mitzvah is only Shabbos on Shabbos. But more so, Iboy is aima svara. The Bekei Yoyis ben Archaim Simon your test says that it makes a fundamental chiluk. Tzitzis, the putting on the tzitzis is not the mitzvah. It's the wearing. Because even the beggar is not chayv until you wear it. So that's just the hechsha mitzvah. But kviyas mezuzah, zokti birka yoyisit, is the asik mitzvah. Because once you knock it onto the doorpost, you have the mitzvah. So it's more than just a hechsha. And that's why we'll soon see that Pais can say a guy should not put it up or a cotton should put it up. So there's definitely a mitzvah by yoyisit mi b'shluchai regarding kviyas mezuzah. Now, the question now becomes a little more challenging. Many people have a minig when they buy a new house, they have a gedolim, rabbanim, rebbes to put up mezuzah for them. What about mitzvah by yoysim li b'shluchai? So this is an old question. The Chachmas Adam and Binas Adam Issa Beheta Simen Zayin has a beautiful truth about this and many other of such questions. How are we so quick with Mechabed and Moyal to do meal for our sons or Kisi Adam? And one of the questions is why Mechabed someone else to put up a mezuzah? I mitzvah boy. I also maybe it's wrong, but it can't be. And he quotes a Gemara. In Menach Islam and Gimel, the Gemara says that Rab Nachman was mechubed by the Bay Reish Kalusa to put a mezuzah for them. Now, Bay Reish Kalusa were Elochayidin. What about Mitzvah boy? So he says, no, no. The truth is, he says, maybe Taka, they should put it, you should put it up by yourself. But they want big Tamidah Chacham, and they had a big house as appropriate for Bay Reish Kalusa. And you know, go from this door to that door, you know, which is their Biyoschu, which is their Seyeshcha. It was very complicated. So they needed someone of authority to decide where to put it. There is mitzvah boy of putting up a mezuzah. If you can't do it, if you're not qualified, get someone better than you. But he does say, the if you could do it, don't delegate someone else. The yes of Chaim, I also in the Sefer Das Noit, it's on Chin Pei Beis. Is it right to have a kvias mezuzah? So he writes, Kedarke, very briefly, Kvat Sovach, Achai Odom, Babinas Odom. In other words, it's wrong. Do it yourself. If you can't do it, do it. However, poi chazi my ama debar. The belt does get, sometimes you have a kriyas mezuzah, but you don't put up the mezuzah. So first of all, I must mention, even though it's a chiddish, but Marach Orzer, one of the Rishonim in Simen Kuf Chav Ches, he taka says that the kriyas mezuzah is only a hechsha mitzvah. He says he gives kedushin, gerushin, havash truma, and kriyas mezuzah, and asiyas maka. He compares Mezuzah to Maka. So, right him, Hechsha Mitzvah. Maybe there's no din of Mitzvah boy. But I think a more fundamental Yisoid is a beautiful stickle of the Tfu Ashar in Yeridea Chav Chesu Dalid, where he basically also wonders why a, a, a Shaykhid will let someone, Machabit someone else, to do Kisi Adam. Mitzvah boy is Meshluchai. So, his Yisoid is that the Klal of Mitzvah boy is when giving someone else is an expression of a lack of chashivas for the mitzvah. Either you're lazy or you're tired, or I'm not interested, let's end. You do it. It's an expression of lack of chashivas. And that's like a, an avla. You should, you should relish each mitzvah. But if you're doing it because you want to mechabit someone else, or he quotes Gemara and Yuma, you want to include others in the mitzvah, others should also have the sweet fragrance, that Lashem of the Gemara, a farsaman that makes everybody smell a little better. It affects all of us. So it's a ma'ila. And therefore he, conc- he, includes, he concludes emphatically, I, I don't retract from my psaq, if you have an adam gadol, that it's a kvoid mitzvah to mechaber him. And he says, he nichulai, he calls to and say to gimel, kvoid e'begdoilim. He says, the only problem is if it's a lack of chashivas. And he gives an example, lemashal, if you want to give the mitzvah to the, the highest bidder. He says that, he says, he quotes, tied to the pasuk, emes kenei al timkar. Buy mitzvahs, don't sell mitzvahs. Okay, you have to know, you know, some mitzvahs need the money, so we'll leave that out. <laughs> but everything else he says is, is very, very emphatic. The, the, the ik is a chashivas for the mitzvah, and don't delegate it. So obviously, if a gadol will do it, that would be a chashivas for the mitzvah. The Das Kedoshim, in Reish Peites, in Cotton Bays, quotes this to Ashar, and he says, if someone has a tzad kavon on the choyne b'yoysa, he could do a better job than you, because he knows the kavonis. 
So I guess, Mineyu Minei, it seems that even though the Chachmazad was not happy about it, but the Tvashar with the addition of the Das Kedoshim, it's a better quality mitzvah. And that's the truth. The Velt is Saimach on this. We give a, a Sambikois. The father will give it up to his, to his father, to someone else. I mitzvah boy. Take the Sambikois for yourself. You know, we, we buy Aliyah, Sanyam the Roy, we machab it someone else. I take it for yourself. And there, but the emphasis by Aliyah is more troubling because it's a Rikha Ziyam to take it, not to give it away. The terrorists, you're doing it with noble intentions and to get more for your money, so to speak. So that's not a question of you're not selling the mitzvah, you're, you're taking the mitzvah and you're giving it to someone to do a better job. Now, but someone did ask an intelligent question. How could someone who doesn't live here put up the mezuzah? Mezuzah chay v'sado. Bishlo mekisi adam. The mitzvahs to cover the blood. You don't need a, a person that, that checked it, as long as the blood's covered. But how does an outsider put up my mezuzah? There it is, right. That's why you have to have a shliach. A person can't just do it without being appointed. But once, he, once the shliach is appointed, shluch shalav kamoisa, and he's doing it on behalf of the mishaleach. And that's why it's poshit that when a person taka gets a shliach, he should make the shliach a shliach. And the shliach is, makes the bracha. Because the klal is by all mitzvahs, who makes the bracha? The shliach. But the chametz, the shliach makes the bracha. So basically the shliach is acting on behalf of the mishaleach regarding the mitzvah and regarding the bracha. Now, the chayv Sador in the Sefer Amit Pei points out, it's nice to mechav and radim gadol, but if he's not available today, don't push it off till tomorrow. Because you go on the day without a mezuzah for an extra kibbutz, so you have to have a sense of priorities also, and better put it up yourself and do the mitzvah, be'itai uvez mami. Basically, a good tezach, nem fazich, like the Velt says, but if there's a way of enhancing the quality of the mitzvah, you mechav your father, even though he's not a gadol, but that's also a gabal of kibbutz. So a person has to have seichel and know that sometimes the kibbutz is also the ratzen Hashem. The point is that when you need shlichus, it has to have a go to al shlichus. What is a very challenging question is when what typically you have a, a new house or a new maizid and they have a few gedolim, each knocks in, puts up one mezuzah to, to one particular door. And the question is, is it appropriate that each gadol makes their own brach? In other words, you put it first, the second, and each makes their own brach. So you think about this objectively, there's a problem. Because the truth is that the chiyav is not on the gedolim, it's on the balabas. He made a shliach. So the shliach is acting on behalf of the balabas. When he makes the bracha, likboya mezuzah, as we said earlier, that lashen yachid includes all the mezuzahs, even those lashen yachid. And the Ramah says, we go to the Rajbah, one bracha covers them all. So how, sh- why should another, how can another God make his own bracha? I, as a mind, not to be yoyed with that bracha, doesn't that have a problem of Gerem Baruch Nehetzricha? And the truth is, we find the Rav in Reishit Gimel Zayin says this very, in a very clear way. But listen to his Mahalach. The truth is that the, the, the similar Shiloh we have when a mother is making a double recipe of challah, mashuf and yomtiv, and is baking 10 pounds of challah. So she thinks, why should I make, take it off myself? I'll take five, make a bracha, and give it to my daughter. A school for this, so it'll be, and then everybody's living, you know, happily ever after. But it's a problem, because you have 10 pounds, and one bracha covers both. Why are you making a new requirement for a new bracha? And the Rav addresses both of these and more. And the Rav, again, is very detailed. He says a mitzvah, that, that each one is a separate mitzvah, individual per person, even though theoretically you could have the Rav every morning making the bracha, lasati, but sits and pattering the whole tzibha, but it's not done. Why? Because I have my chiv, he has his chiv, and I'm not chiv to be yaitz with him. That's one category. Le'idach, if it's one ma'isa mitzvah that has different parts to it, like bedikas chametz, so the baidik makes the bracha, and then he sends his children, you go to this room, that room, one bracha for one mitzvah. The son says, can't say, I'm going to be, make my own bracha, I'm not yaitz with my father's bracha. That's wrong. Because it's all one mitzvah. That's so far so good. Then he adds a different marshal. A mitzvah achas shleima la'adam echad, the marshal, chala, and kvias mezuzah, that's one mitzvah that has different parts to it, is the same thing. Don't make separate brachas on one mitzvah. So he equates bedikas chametz to chala and 
Kviyas Mezuzah. That's what he wants to say. So, like the Rav, it's Pashit, Takab Chaim and Das Noita, and I saw others say this as well, that it's just like you can't make two brachas on different rooms of Badikas Chametz, so too on Kviyas Mezuzah or Chal. However, the Ziv Chetzedek, one of the Gdoyle Svarad, who lived after the Rav, who quotes the Rav, and he said, I don't see the analogy. Because chala, every five pounds, especially if it's separate and separate, uh, uh, different uh, kalim, is a separate chiv. What makes it one? Certainly, mezuzah, each, each doorpost is a different mitzvah. B'dik is one mitzvah, no matter how big your house is. But how do you compare B'dik HaShchamet to Kviyas Mezuzah? It's, it's almost like, like Kisi Adam on different diamonds. So he says, basically, he doesn't understand the Rav, compares to B'dikas Chametz. And what I should add, the Chok Yaakov, Tof Nun Zayin, Gimel, and of course, Narachayim, who Taka says, even my Chala, if it's separate, you can make two different brachas. You're not going to put it together to make one bracha. Now, regarding Mezuzah, the, I saw the Bir HaLocha and the Chayalei, the Aleph Tzadik Dalid, both say we can understand the meaning of those that make different brachas. Because really, even though it's one homeowner, how did that impact the different rooms? It's one house, but each room has an independent chiyav. So the embassy is, again, a person is, is trying to be careful. It's probably better that one person makes the bracha and might to the others. It doesn't take away from the keyboard. The ik is the pictures by the keyboard. You know, forget about the bracha. But, but it's hard to understand, to, to, to put yourself into a, a suffix bracha. The ik is that the bracha should be made, and all the gdom, listen to the animals bracha, but if you see some that do it, you can understand where they're coming from. The other gedolim have a mind not to be yoyt with his bracha, and then it's separate mitzvahs. It would be something like, not like, uh, of course, not like bidikas chametz. It would be something like talis that each one is a separate mitzvah. Someone asked, can an isha put up a mezuzah? Why? Not by a public ceremony. Of course, that's inappropriate. But let's say she was in the bungalow county, and he's not coming. The husband coming first Friday afternoon. So, what's the, you know, anything wrong? The answer is, what should be wrong? says, And women are definitely chayiv like men. So, basically, the pashtas of Adai can make, put it up and make a brach. Abshul Kutlan, Yeshua's Malka, and the Rambam Dalit Yud says, it's big chiddish, that is just like the Mardash, Ukshartem, Ukshaftem, whoever can't write, can't do, he applies that to mezuzah, and women should not put up mezuzahs. Now, the Eretz Sfirati, the Koshiklov, and Aleph Tezvah, but more, much more emphatically, the Shevet Alevi, and Beis Kuf, Non Ches, right? So, Lashem, Dov Vizeh, Ef, Shala, Oimroi. He said, this can't be. The Gemara doesn't say that regarding mezuzah. Mezuzah, Nashem, Achayim, like men. He said, even though the Eretz Sfir has a little bit of Safik, but ain't Safik, but Dovah. And that's talk, I have a whole list of points, and they say that, that women can make the bracha and put it up. Now, of course, the technical part of it, if they're not good with knocking nails, so you have to get someone to help them. But Avada and Avada, if an Ish is home alone, or a mana or in the bungalow, it's much better, of course, they should put it up themselves than wait till a man comes along and does it. In fact, in Svara, an Isha putting it up in her bungalow, her house, is better than a Shliach. Because Mitzvah Bayas Mishluchai, that's her Chiyav. She has a Chiyav, which is the actual Chiyav, as opposed to a, shli- a, 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 a Shliach that only comes to our Shlichus. Now, we spoke about this a few weeks ago, but just briefly, most Pais can hold a guy cannot be delegated to put up a mezuzah. It's not just to have a mezuzah on the doorpost, like having a maka on the porch. It's the mitzvah likpoi a mezuzah. Now, the Mashag has this famous chiddush in Aleph Nunzayim that he holds it's more like, like kviyas maka. It's just a chatimza. But again, as we spoke then, most Pais can hold that's part of the surah mitzvah, that's part of the nusach bracha likpoi so a guy should not be asked, you know, it's very convenient, the guy paints and takes it off and puts it back. Or you have a handyman, you know, you, you bought a whole big building, you have to put up a lot of mezuzahs. But the has no patience putting up mezuzahs. The handyman put it up. That's where mitzvah boy, besides the problem of a guy. What do you mean? It's a mitzvah. That's the tirchah. Tirchah the mitzvah. A big schuz. So to have a guy put it up, even when it's difficult for you to do it, is, is not right. I can't say it's wrong, but most place from hold. You have to take it off and put it back again outside Israel, even though some are mekel. And for the same reason, a cotton should not be asked to put up a mezuzah, even though a cotton has a chi of the Rabbanon, and maybe he lives in the house, so he has a shaykhaz to it. But Dr. Das Kdoshim, Reish Peites, Beis, 
that Lemaisa, you need a level of das, you need a level of chiyuv, and if a guy can't, so a cotton, even though it's not as bad as a guy, but it's enough of a problem to have a godal dafka. The last group of questions regarding the actual nartik, the case of the mezuzah, is interesting. Because really, the Gemara and Shabbos, Kufla Mekimel Mabez, says that you should have a nice case to hold the Sefer Torah. Now, even though the Sefer Torah is the Kedusha, what does the case have to do with it? I, I understand, nice lettering. But why is the case of Sefer Torah considered Noi Mitzvah? Teretz is Pashat. Mr. Gura says the Klau in Chavdalet Tes, it's a mitzvah to make a talisna. The chola mitzvahs do it bahidur v'chol ma de efsha. Shenem bezeh keilev yan veyu. So that's why the minigah oilam is, and that's what the them say, v'chassidim kamadiz beferish and simen kuf chav tes, that there is an inyan to have a nice mezuzah case. Because we associate the mezuzah case with the mezuzah. And that represents the mezuzah. Now someone asked me, also oh, ibazoi, this should be a hidden to have a beautiful house. I told me you're right, many people are mahad on that. <laughs> but the truth is the house is different because you don't see in the house a hitter for the mezuzah as you see in a nice case. But the Maisa, there is a hitter, and I saw in the, one of the swarm, the Heintegen, they say for ha mezuzah, they, they, they found the old uh, the, the artifacts, they found from the times of the, it goes back to the times of the, 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 the Beis HaMikdash, they found ancient mezuzah case that were gold and silver, that had Magolius Toivais on them. They, this is something that the Malchai Yisrael. So obviously, there is, there's definitely an Indian to have a nice mezuzah case. The question is basically, what is a hidder regarding this? So, Avada, it sounds like silver is a great idea. So, a silver case, gold, if you could afford it, Nach Besser. The issue of personal, I must mention the Das Kedoshim, Reish Beites, obviously a very practical person, he says, but don't make a nice case on the outdoor mezuzah, because the guy will steal it and throw out the mezuzah and keep the, the case so it's coming to a So I'm talking about in the house itself. So the, the point really here is that there is a hidda that we shouldn't neglect and it's twice in Shulchan Aruch. The Shulchan Aruch in two places implies that the mezuzah, at least the shakai, should be visible. There should be nearer. So the first priority should be that the shakai should be seen when it's on the wall. But when you have a gold case, obviously it's not transparent. But the truth is there is a little bit of an issue even with a silver and gold case besides this hidden. And there's the, again, the Das Kedoshim Reish Peistes Aleph quotes from the Baal Shem Tov, not to have a case made out of a barzel of metal. Why? And the assumption is, just like on the Mizbeach they did not have barzel, because the Mizbeach is Meirich Yomim and Barz is Mekatsa, so Mezuzah, that's the Man Yerbu Yemeichem, it's inappropriate to have Matchis. That's what the Das Kedoshim quotes in Baal Shem Tov. Now, there are those that feel that based on this is Lav Dafka Barzel, any of the Sheish Matchis. So that would exclude silver or gold or any of the Sheish Matchis. Now, however, there is a source from Maril and the Chadosh, is Kuf Chabez, or Chashuch and Reish Pevav, hey, it says Beferish, that they did use metal uh, mezuzah cases, the Chazanish use it as a front door, and apparently it doesn't say this by mezuzah. We find this by the Mezbeach, we find this in, in the end of Kuf Pei regarding benching, not to have a metal knife on the table, but who said anything that Atarichas Yomim has the problem of Matchis? So, you know, as I mean, so what's the halach of I told him, I think it's a very, I think it's a very accurate uh, psat. The yes of Chaim and Das Noite, what's the what's Lamaisa? So he writes, my father was Makbid and the Chazanish wasn't. Okay, the disciple had some Chazanish Managam also. Very good. You, each one follows their own minig. So those that will not use that, but Chaim did add in that same Das Noite that he based on a Ramban that even if you hold by bars was no good, but the Ramban at the end of Paris yesterday says Kesmanzov is good for the, it's not a problem, it's only Barzel, not Sheish Matkas. So you could have Kesef and Zav and just avoid basically Barzal for those that have the minik. But as I told you earlier, what's more important in Reish Pei Vav He and Reish Pei Ches Tez Vav twice, the Shulchan Aruch says that Mezuzah, the, the Shem Shakai, should be near, it should be seen from the outside. Now the embassy, you'll look at the old mezuzah, mezuzah case, there were some of them that had actually even silver and gold, but the upper part was open. So you could see the Shakai. 
Now, Grad, I should mention the, the big problem. I mean, the Chaim Kanyevsky makes a point of quoting Seif Ma'ari Yishenim. Sometimes you put it in and you only see Shin Dalit. I don't want to say what that is. So be careful. That's no good. You have to be able to see the whole Shakai. But you have to be able to see the Shakai. So basically, with what they, the police can say that of more hidden than anything is that the, the Shakai should be nearest. Now, they asked Rav Ozma Klerich Shailan, look at the Lashin, it's pretty mucha. Is the whole mezuzah has to be nearest or just the Shakai? The Shachonarach is Kemat Mefurish, the Shem Shakai should be nearest. So if someone wants to have a fancy case and do it, Al Pialoch with all he do him, he should either buy such a case, which they do sell, that the upper part is, is, has a glass covering on it, and the rest of it is any type of material that you like. But basically, Lucite case has a big mile. Lucite, of course, that's transparent or glass, because the whole thing is near is certainly the Shakai. So, you know, if someone wants to ask you what's a bigger hit, of silver or Lucite, probably in Svar, Lucite is a bigger hit. Lucite has a mechab in two places, silver is a mile. So, basically, if you could have a, a nice, beautiful case that has the upper part open and the, the, the Shakai is exposed, that's, a biggest, that's the biggest mile. Of course, in a room where there's a lack of Tzniyas, or there's, there's a changing diapers, so the shaka has to be covered. I'm talking about where the actual case could be, the shaka could be left exposed. Kiva in that same tube, and Simon and Ches was very against the minute of having a nice case and leaving the upper part open entirely, because people extend their hand to kiss the mezuzah, they t- end up touching the, 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 the mezuzah with their bare hands, if that touch that shaka. And they might even end up erasing the Shem Shakai, which even Ois Achas, Rachman al is a love. The mezuzah case, after it's no longer needed, Midina Gemara, Megillah Chavav, or Chaim Kufnan Dalit Gimel, is high to put in Shemus. Because Shemus is Kedusha, or Tashmishe Kedusha. The Gemara explains Tashmishe Kedusha is something that actually touches the Kedusha, like a mantle of Sefer Torah, the Garp of Sefer Torah. So, based on that, the Machabah says that mezuzah case should be put in Shemus. However, in our time, where it's standard procedure that say from wrap the mezuzah either once or even twice with a saran plastic wrap, so our mezuzah cases no longer touch the mezuzah. So that would not be chayv and shemis unless, as the Shulchan Aruch stresses, unless the case is used lenoi of the mezuzah. Now, typically, a, 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 any decent case is bought lenoi, unless you buy the true, cheap plastic ones, but here we have a point that the plastic definitely is chayiv and shamus, and even the plastic case, the, the case, I'm sorry, the, if it's made lenoi, should also be replaced, placed in shamus, that's considered tashmishe kedusha. Of course, the nails don't have to be put in shamus, that's only a tash of the tashmish. And last place, I just want to mention, at least briefly, there is a, a type of mezuzah case that has a maila, but has a shtickle of a chasarn also, and I want to mention that. Today they have a mezuzah case that has, it's hard to describe it, but if you know it, probably you'll, you'll chap what I mean from the way I describe it. It has a case that you attach to the wall, the doorpost, and then it has two parts from top and bottom protruding out like this, and you put the mezuzah in a glass case, like a tube, like a test tube. In fact, the Israeli police can call it a like a test tube. So it has basically a frame attached to the doorpost, and you put the mezuzah in a glass case, and you slip it in on both sides, and then it's there. The whole mezuzah is, is noticeable. You can have a nice case, and everything is wonderful. The marsham already in Dalit Kuf Lamet and many later pais can have two problems with that. First of all, if you're not really making a kvias mezuzah, you're slipping it into a case that easy come, easy go. Who said that's a kvias? But besides that, more problematic is that case and the mezuzah are not on the doorpost. There's probably an inch or close to an inch of space between the doorpost and the mezuzah. So it's not even on the doorpost. Now this is a big question. Is there a chatzitza by a, by a, by a mezuzah? Because we have the case, the mezuzah case in the back. But that's not a problem because that's the, the, the mezuzah case is attached and the mezuzah is touching the case which is attached to the wall. But this is too far off. Now, I can get into that now, but there's definitely a reason to avoid it. Some place can say, that it, it's one big case, we look at the case as one. But basically, I want to just mention, you know, this is the last time we'll be here until Mitzvah um, but this is probably the, the hardest kasha that I have to deal with, and that's kasha lai pidaschem. You know, this is coming the end of the, our learning here till after the summer. And as always is, it's very, very difficult, this kasha, this kasha lai pidaschem. But at least let me just mention my akar satoiv, you know, 
to the Beis Medjish they gave us the opportunity week after week. And, you know, Chazal say, Hakar Satoiv, not Hashlama Satoiv, because it's never shy to be really Makir Toiv, to be Mashlam the Toiv, at least Makir Toiv. The Beis Medjish that was very gracious to us, a special, special Hakar Yachter of Simcha Deutsch for all that he does and does, will do for all of us. And I want to thank each and every one of you making this Sunday afternoon Kiddush Hashem possible. Those that are listening, Bechol Tfutei Zaharetz, Kaya thank you for listening. But Achrein Chaviv, Achrein Hichbid, is a Blazer Baruch Bold, who's Bemis impossible to thank enough. He's the muster of what I once taught, Toivli Toyas Picha Mi Alfei Zav So the Kashi is, of course, Toyas better than Alfei Zav big deal. But the Chiddush is, not only my learning is better than Zavah Chesev, Toivli Toyas Picha. Even someone else's learning is so precious that I'm giving up everything. He's living toivli toyas picha, giving up everything for Yenem's learning, for learning your learning, for those that are, that are listening again. Bechal tvut sa'ar is not just our shi'ur, all the shi'urim, the brashim that help all of the the shloisha shutfim, the those that have made this year possible should all have a good gazun tezuma, and we talk of to be united in the new stolen of his majesty, Shlaim Abnuya, a good tezuma to you all. Hey, uh, uh, the, the Rabbi Smith remembers everything, but he forgot the Iker. I have a word of Jeff Smith who puts on Mavis a whole week, Yoim of Elida, ten the Geshores to find every safer to bring it to us. Kishulchan Arach, David Shul Benjamin, Langa Gutu, the Yom Evan Machazak is right there. A boy said the Shiva from Rabbi Smith, Bezashem, will come back after the summer a week before Labor Day. A week before Labor Day. This, the next week, Monday, a week from tomorrow, we're starting all the shiurim in all the neighborhoods here in Borough Park in Stone Shul. Twice a day we'll have shiurim for the summer shiurim and in Pupa in Williamsburg and a Flappish in Boston. Next week, Monday, Hashem is Baruch. Ask everybody that's here to participate or participate, bring the chaveirim or, or listen live, watch the shiurim or hear the shiurim and sponsor the shiurim if you can. Shlishes, Be'ez Hashem, like you heard from Rabbi Smith, the, the Bismedish, the Askonim, the Chosh of Askonim, the Heavy, the Ike Menal, the Ham Moshe Reisman, they put Koyches Yoim of Elayla by Messiah Snefesh, they have to raise $20 million to rebuild a beautiful Bismedish, the Hagdul Teure Ladira, and we need Dorim to participate. This is a Beis Amigdash Ma'at, the whole world learns Teure from this Bismedish. Tvile, Teure, Avoid the Chasidis, everything. Who didn't come and dance and it's Simchas Atay and Chasidus who stole with this Medish. There's nobody in the world that didn't join it. And temporarily, when they were going with Hashem, they're trying, there was reasons to do it as fast as possible in a month or so to the temporary Bis Medish, which will be a block away on top of the Chase Bank. The whole floor near the sound of Bis Medish will be a whole new temporary Bis Medish. A Golas Bitter Golas. But the boys say we need the help there building over a whole Bis Medish there, the new Bis Medish here. And the Tzibur at large worldwide. Who want to have a chalik in Beis Hamikdash Ma'at that's similar to the Beis Hamikdash Hagodel? There's no Beis Hamikdash in the world who had tens of thousands or hundreds of thousands of people who joined either by shurim, by davening, or like this is Medish. And you want to have a Beis Hamikdash Ma'at? This is the place to give to. But another thing is, we have a problem there. This is the second floor, and we have a lot of elderly Eden who come into the shurim. We have a problem. We have a lot of Eden who, who want to join the shurim, and they say, "I can't go. It's the second floor." We need now a tzaddik, a nachshim, and a mladim that's going to come here. Probably, I want to have this for the next few years to build an elevator for the temporary elevator for these the hundreds of people who will come to davening Shabbos week learning, and they will also join the shul. This is pukuch nefesh for this Eden. So we don't have sponsors for this. We need a, a yid to come over. I want to sponsor the elevator. Shah, I want to have this chus, and then with that this chus. Everybody the whole family, the Ebrish have Aliyahs and Oilers and an Oilers and Baruchnis and Begashmis and the Kinder and Nachas. I'm a tutfa for Smedish, I'm a tutfa for Andri Eden, for Teil and Tfiller. This is the biggest chus you can have. All of them are gesund and zumma, like good to You can call Igen Shir Teil at 718-851-8651 or email ist at yeshivana.com or come to one of the astronom of the Smedish or Igen Shir Teil astronom. Tiskel Mitzis. I remind you again, the Oilem, the Shurim is talking about Hashem next Monday. Another thing. Klal Yisrael needs tremendous chosim. This now we have the, the, the one of the zekana tzaddikim who, who, who is never fighting for his life on a respirator in Mamanli's hospital. 
He's there, he has pneumonia with infections, and the, with, with, they're trying, they're hoping the medicine will work. The virus didn't kick in yet. It's already there two days, and they, they, they need Rahm Shemaim. What are we here with Allah Tzadikim? We need, this is Kama Tzadikim from the Dor Shova. We're asking everybody to rise Rahm Shemaim, but the Tfilim, but the Torah. Everybody should join the